It is on, I'm telling you. Okay. okay, we're back. Hello, welcome to Let's Make Art. We are going to be painting a beautiful monstera uh, leaf, but let's introduce everybody before we get that going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, that's you, Jake. That's you, Al. They're coming. They're making their way. It's on. It's on. Don't worry. We got it? Everybody's calling. Right. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we like to introduce everybody before we get started, so that way you know who everybody is and who I'm talking to. Wait, which camera am I looking at? The <laughs> camera one? The big yeah, one? The, the little one. The cactus. cactus, okay. So Rachel's painting with us today, and um, I'm Sarah Cray, I'm also painting. And uh, this is Natalie, she's painting. Al's doing camera work. Missy's painting today, and Jake, of course, is doing camera work. They get it running smooth, so hello. Casey should be back. Uh, I forgot the reference photo at home, so he ran to go get that for me. <laughs> so he should be um, back here soon with reference photo. So yeah. Um, okay, so hopefully you have your printable of our leaf. You can find this just on our website at Let's Make Art. Can and you your week? oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you about my week. So um, this weekend I went to NAMTA, which is the international. Art Materials Association, and so um, there's this huge conference with all of the art vendors. We got Arches and Canson and Faber-Castell and like all of the brands, and I got a ton of samples to try, and um, it was just really fun uh, meeting these companies and being able to talk to them about their products and um, kind of asking them about it. So I got a bunch of samples to try, like seriously, this huge bag of samples that I get to go through and play with to see what would be best for us to carry. So if you guys have a specific brand of paper or brushes or paint that you love and you want us to check out, please let me know. Um, right now we carry um, Acrylla Gouache and the Dr. PH Martin watercolors because those are my favorite and that's what I have found I loved. Um, so if there's a brand that you love as passionately as I do about these paints, um, please let me know because I would love to check them out and see if they're worth us carrying in our store. Is that all I needed to say about? Yeah. It was a good time. It was nice. It was fun. This is show and tell. <laughs> okay, so uh, for our printables here, um, you, you're welcome to try and freehand this if you want, or you can take the printable and the graphite paper to draw it. Now, we've already kind of been drawing it as I've been introducing people, but let me just show you really quick how to use graphite paper. Where did I put that? Right here. Okay, so you'll get, it. no, it's okay. So you'll just get a sheet of graphite paper and the side that's darker, that has the actual graphite on it. And so you just put that down and your paper on top and then you're just gonna trace it out. I've already traced mine, so I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna do it again, but you guys can do that at home. And this one is a pretty simple shape, so you can just do that as I talk to you about it. And um, remember that with, this paper that no matter where you press, there's gonna make a mark. So even if I hold it really tightly right here, I'm gonna get a, a little bit of a line on my paper. Is that up enough? There we go. So, um, so just be aware when you're like making lines, don't do like extra marks, but you can just erase those because it's just graphite. So it's not a big deal. I was just gonna ask, so can we erase with the regular eraser or with that eraser that you have in your So hand? this is a regular, like you can use a regular eraser too, but um, this is just a better eraser. So if you're into drawing or art, please get this eraser because it's, <laughs> so it's so much better for your paper that you use because it's only going to get the graphite off. It's not going to like rub off the actual paper fibers. What kind of er eraser is that? This is like a gummy eraser. You can just get it on our store. I it's not very expensive. And then you can use it forever. So when it gets dark, you just kind of spread it out like, like okay. Play-Doh and then Play like, yeah. And then get it to like a light gray area and it's cleaner again. And um, I'm just going to erase some of my hard lines a little bit. Yay. We have it. Thanks, Casey. Okay. We have our reference photo. So that's good news, guys. Okay, the colors we're using today are um, black, Dr. P.H. Martin black, olive green, Norway blue, and golden brown. So these are our four colors today. 
And um, while you are drawing your things out, I'm going to start setting up. Do you mind putting that over there, please? Do you mind if I use that eraser after that? Oh, yeah. Go for it. Now, for this painting, because we're going to use some pretty heavy color, um, you're probably not going to see a lot of the lines through your painting. Um, so you don't have to stress too much if there's still some a good amount of lines on it, because we'll most likely cover those up. But like when we did the bird, like the bird's belly was white and that was a really soft wash over. And so some lines might have shown through there. But this one, it shouldn't be too bad. And for me, sometimes it really, um, it doesn't bother me too bad. It used to really bother me when I started. The tray. Oh, the tray. So I can see the colors? Yeah. Um, I don't really know what I was saying. Oh, it used to bother me a lot when there was lines in my work, but it doesn't bother me as much anymore. Okay. And then I think we just need black and we're good to go. So, let's start with some warm-up exercises like we usually do. So get your scratch paper out. And um, just grab your brush. And today we're working with a 10 brush, 10 round. It's a little bit bigger. Just because this is kind of a larger area that we're just filling in. But if you have a round six or round four, you can still do this project. It's just going to take you a little bit longer to fill in. So, um, so for our practices, we're just going to start off with um, practicing our value change. Thank you. So I'm just going to grab, you can grab any color. I'll just do black today. And we're going to start off with a dark line. And this is going to be like our darkest area, right? So for our value change, we want to go from dark to light. So I start off with my dark area and then I just clean my brush pretty much and just use the water and smear that down. And so you should get a nice dark to medium to light from that. And you can even go back in and make that first area a little bit darker if you want. Kind of smear it out again. Now what you might be tempted to do, but what you do not want to do is you don't want to make this mark, okay? And then spread it and then go back and forth because this is what happens when you go back and forth is it's going to become one value. So you see how this is kind of all one, we want it to go from dark to really light. So make sure, and you can always pick up color if it's too heavy on the light side, you can add color on the darker side. So we want that nice range, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and then uh, what you can do while this is still wet is I just want you to drop in some water and just see how the water plays with the stuff that's there. It's not going to drop. You get too much, it just makes a giant mess. You can touch it directly to it, Natalie. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, so while, wait, somebody did or if they're they asking asked. if I did? Okay, asking if I found a good black paper for gouache. I did get some samples from Canson to try. They did have like a black drawing paper at the convention that I got some samples to try to see if it would be good for gouache. And I will let you know as soon as I finish trying that. So thank you for checking back in with me on that. And I'll just let you know. In the meantime, if you really want to work on a colored background, you can just paint it black with your gouache and then let it dry. And then you can go back and paint over it. So you can make any colored um, paper, but I'm still in search for that good paper. I'll let you know. Okay. And then um, the next thing we're going to do is we'll just do um, an even wash. I'm going to get a different color. So this one we want, so value is when it changes from dark to light. Value has nothing to do with color. It has more to do with the lightness and darkness of whatever that color is. 
So for us, we want to make like a light and a medium wash. And this would be an e even value because there's not one area that's super darker than the other. It's kind of all the same. And then I'll try and make a super dark one. So to go darker, you use more of the paint and less water. And to go lighter, you just add more water. And what that does is the more water just makes it, um, makes the white of the paper um, more obvious. So instead of adding white to make something lighter, we just use more water so the white of the paper shows through. And that we use as our highlights or our lighter areas. Yeah, and to help it be, even if you're having a hard time, is you can just go back and forth with your brush. And then that should just even it out. I didn't do so good on the medium. I didn't know how to do it because when I That's dipped okay. it, it didn't, like it got light. Mm -hmm. That's okay, you can even make one lighter than that, I bet. Okay. That can still be your medium. Okay, I'm gonna put this down so I don't keep on looking at my phone while I'm painting. Yeah, distracted. Okay. I think that's good. You guys feel ready to get started? Oh, we got to do our oath. Oh, yeah. Don't forget. <laughs> forget that. I know. I am ourselves. watching it. Okay. Uh, everybody raise your right hand and you're going to repeat after me and say, I will be kind to myself. I will be kind to myself. I will have fun tonight. I will have fun tonight. And I will embrace the imperfections. And I will embrace the imperfections. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we'll get started. And this is a what? I'm just kidding. She said she had her fingers crossed. Oh. Okay. So when I do these outlines, I like to kind of outline where the where the shadows are on a painting and where the highlights are. So if you compare it to the one I have next to it. I'm going to just scooch that over so you guys can see both of them. I have this area kind of outlined here because this is where it's shadowed. And then I have this area right here. That's a highlight area on our leaf. Same over here and over here. So um, just so you know, I try and like keep aware of what the lighting is as I'm painting and as I'm drawing so then I know how far out to make my shadow. So if you ever draw on your own or do projects on your own, it's really helpful if you kind of are aware of where the darks and the lights are as you go. And I like to start with my darks. So grab your 10 brush and I'm gonna mix my olive green. We're in here with some black because that's gonna make it darker. So this one is um, probably even parts black and green. And then I'm just gonna drop a little bit of blue in there, just a tiny bit, just to add a different dimension of color. Does that one we need to like put a paper towel underneath? Maybe. There we go. Got it. Is that better? I think so. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start on the right side of my vein and I'm just gonna start by putting in my darks, which is my dark green. And then it can even be darker than what's already there. So we want it to be real dark. I'm just going to follow that up. Up down the center. Up down the center. Yeah, up, up down, through the up center. Through the center. <laughs> up through the center. <laughs> and kind of out to those um, outlines that I made to you. Now, if you don't, like on this leaf, it looks like I forgot to draw the line of where the dark like ended. So I'm just going to kind of like guess. And that's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay. And then I'm going to put the dark on the right side of my leaf on the edge here. And then, um, so I've laid down my darks. And then I'm just going to rinse my brush 
and then I'm just going to spread out this color that I already laid down in between these two sections. And hopefully it will do what we did in our warm up, which is go from dark to medium and light. Medium, dark to medium to light through there. Now if you want to blend it a little more, then you can go where they meet and kind of spread it a little bit more. Just like that. And you don't have to be, um, I feel like this painting is supposed to be a little bit like messy and loose, so don't worry if the lines don't match up exact. Um, just kind of have fun with it and see what happens. And then, yes. We're filling this in and we're kind of like gradually getting lighter like you said. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, you, yeah. So you just start blending those two areas together. Yep. Okay. And the reason why we're doing this is because this leaf has a curve to it. This section of the leaf has a curve. So um, let's say we're looking at this leaf and the light source is looking at this leaf. The vein where it meets goes in right here, Casey, so if you wanna see. So let's say my leaf rounds up. We're trying to make it seem like it rounds up. And by doing that, we have to make a highlight on this area. And that's gonna show that this section is the closest to our light source. And then the darker sections are the farthest away from our light source. So um, that's how you can make something that's like flat look rounded, is just with shading from dark to medium to light. So wherever your highlight is. And that's why we're gonna kind of um, recreate that idea on all the leaves because it's like our leaf um, goes in and then out and then in again. So I'm just gonna keep going. And you might want different um, colors for your leaf. So for my leaf, I did um, like on the right side, I did more of like a green bluish color. And then on the left side, I added a little bit more yellow. But if you like your, your greenery to be like a really nice yellow greenery, then you don't even have to use the blue if you don't want to. So you can kind of change the colors you want as you go, depending. Maybe you like your greens to little, be a little bit more on the bluish side, then you'll just add a little bit more blue. Now I'm gonna drop in just a little bit of yellow for variation here. Just like that. Is the yellow this one? The yellow, yep, that's the golden brown. So the yellow, it's actually called golden brown, but I call it my yellow. I actually use it for a lot of yellow in my projects because it has a nice like warmth to it. Brown velvet, as some would say. And then this is also a really fun time where you can just do your water drops if you want to just see how those turn out. So I'm going to add that a little bit on like the highlighted section of my leaf. I might end up blending that out if I don't like it too much, but that's something that we could do later. So then on this second prong of the leaf, like the whole bottom side of it is shaded. And then I'm just gonna do the edge. And then rinse my brush and blend those two areas together. Like I feel that. like yours is a lot darker than mine. Is it the, just because you're adding a lot more black? Yeah, I think I'm probably just adding more black to mine. If yours is not as dark as mine, that's the nice thing about watercolor. You can absolutely go on and add another layer on top of it that is darker. So um, you can do that at any time. If you want to do that now, you're welcome to. Or maybe you just kind of want to see how things play up. But I went really dark in my darks here. So One of the things I'm a little bit concerned about is as I'm trying to shade the colors and blend everything, I'm afraid that it's going to end up 
just being a wash. Just being okay. Being monotone. Uh -huh. So how do I blend in and then add other colors without it all ending up the same color? Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do, so you might have to just leave it for a second to let it dry because if it's wet, it just might blend too much okay. together and you won't be able to keep that distance. So, and then when you add your darks, like, um, cause I think this yellow color is really beautiful and nice, mm -hmm. but this is looking a little like black yeah. next to yeah, it. I was trying to darken so it I would just lift up that black with your just um, paper, towel. paper towel or like a clean brush, just kind of like lift it up just a little bit. And when you add your darks, you want to mix the black with another color so it's not just pure black. Okay. So, um, and just wait, wait for that to dry before you go back in and do another layer so it doesn't bleed too much with that. But um, I would just mix a little bit more green into that with, and then that way it doesn't come out just kind of more of a pure black. Did you pull that one to the middle and kind of dark about what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So right here? Okay, so um, Natalie wanted to darken this area a little bit more, um, but she put in more of a black color in there to use to darken it, which is, which is fine because that's what I just said, right? I was like, I just use black to darken it. But what I meant to say is I use a mixture of black with green, so it still has like a color. It just comes across more as a dark green. Um, so we lifted up the black that she put down and we're going to wait for that to dry just for a second. And then she's going to go back in with a nice darker green and, um, darken that up. And then you can, um, just blend it with what you already have going there too. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Here. And then, so I dropped in some watercolor texture on mine, and I'm getting some really like interesting um, results on this side. And um, I'm just gonna leave that for a second and see how it dries because, like, right now I might want to blend it out just a little bit because that is such a strong line. But um, I'm also gonna try and embrace like the funkiness that happens with watercolor. So um, I'm just gonna leave that for a second. I'm just gonna leave it, and then I'll go back to it. Chad, the leaves are so fun. And Suzanne's on. Suzanne's on. I hope you guys are hey, painting. Suzanne. Painting these leaves. I was just with her. I told her to give a shout out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Hi, Suzanne. Um, and then I'm just going in, putting dark on the bottom part of this leaf. And this is why the 10 is so nice because, like, We've been painting for like how long and our leaf is almost half done. You know what I mean? Like you can absolutely do this with a smaller brush, but when you're just filling big areas of space and you're not doing too much detail work, um, you can just quickly cover areas. I actually really like my tent. And the nice thing is once you get really comfortable with the pressure and getting thin lines, you can use your tent brush to do detail work as well. So, um, yeah, I love my brush, my brushes. Okay. So now what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna um, try and lift up a little bit of color um, to create some highlights. So my highlights feel pretty good on my bottom two leaves, but what I'm gonna do on this leaf in particular is you wanna make sure the area is wet when you wanna lift it up and then you just get kind of a clean brush and you pick up the pigment with your brush and then you wipe that on the paper towel. So you're, you're lifting up pigment. And you can do this with your paper towel too, um, but sometimes you get like texture from your paper towel, which in, like in clouds, that's perfect. That's what you want. But for this one, I'm just using my brush because it's a smoother pickup. And I'm just gonna just in these highlighted areas, I'm just gonna pick up some color. Just like that. And then in this top one, it's still pretty wet. I'm gonna lift up some color there too. So in these spots, I think I'm just trying to understand. So we had the outline. I am having a hard time 
like see how I have the lines and you can totally still see them. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to darken that up? Yeah, so or, do you know what I'm saying? Casey, can you come over here and look? So I'll show. Just okay, so you can still see with her pencil lines right here. So that means that this area right here, this needs to be darker. So this you need to fill in darker okay. and this area needs to be darker too. Okay. That's what those lines are for. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to follow your lines exactly. That's just um, a guide for you. And then what I'm gonna do is, um, I feel pretty good about my leaf, but I want to introduce a little bit more blue to it. Um, so I'm gonna go in and just with like a light blue wash, kind of just start introducing that to some of my painting and start blending it in because I just want just a little bit of a bluer look. Now, if you drop in straight blue paint, it's gonna look kind of straight blue. So try and mix it with a little bit of green so it's not so bright blue in the middle of your leaf. Here, and I gotta make my leaf. I went outside my line a little bit, so I'm just gonna make that leaf thicker. Okay, sorry, Sarah, I missed that. What were we doing with the blue? I'm just dropping it. I just want my leaf to be a little bit more blue. You might love the color of your leaf, and that's totally fine. Okay. But to add a little bit more blue to it, I'm just mixing a little bit of the blue with the green okay. and just kind of adding it in in some places just to get different colors going on. Gloria says she's late. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's all right. Quilt making, I understand. You can just jump on in. We're not too far in. I'm just adding a little bit of blue here. And so it's kind of going over my highlighted areas. So I'm just going to go back in and lift that color back out so it's still a nice lighter area. Okay, and then let's just drop in some water. Now, uh, if you've been messing with this, so my paper is starting to buckle just a little bit because I keep messing with it back and forth. So um, if that's happening to you, then let's just take a break from wherever you're working and move to a different area because we still want to kind of keep the integrity of our paper. So let's go to the other side. Yeah, let's go through everybody's, that's a good idea. Okay, let's start over here with Misty. Okay. I feel like I can get it as dark as you. Okay, so um, what I like right here is this blue right here is really beautiful. I think you got a great color right here. And I'm just gonna go in and, um, where's your green? Green and black. So you want it darker in this Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just layering on top, too. So I'm just going to introduce a little bit more. I'm going to make some blue in there, too. So It's got this nice. And then what you're going to want to do is kind of clean your brush and start blending that color okay. out. So sometimes you kind of just have to do it in layers. And so this area was pretty dry, so it, it took to a darker wash. Okay. But it's looking really good, and I like your colors and textures. Okay, here we have um, Natalie here. This is looking really nice. I like what's happening here with the color. What I would just say is take your clean brush and try and lift out a little bit more color in this section and in this section so we can tell that there is a nice highlight on that leaf right there because because it's kind of looking from here to here it kind of looks the same we even want it a little bit lighter in the middle there and the same on that leaf okay but besides that i think this dark is really good on your edges and your blending is nice let's just let's just really highlight that highlight okay, okay. oh this is gorgeous okay Thank you. i love the colors that are happening here this is looking really nice we're going to wait for this to dry okay. before we, we mess with it too much because it's too wet for us to do but what I would say is next time around, do even a, another layer of a dark wash here. Okay. And even a little bit darker here. Okay. Because this is really nice. Like this is a nice dark, medium, 
high light, medium dark. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of losing that on this leaf right here. Yeah. So just when it dries a little bit, go back in and do another darker wash right there underneath. Okay, I'll do that. But besides that, that's looking really beautiful. Wow, those okay. look really good over there. They all look really good. So this is such a great project because everybody's, it just, it's fun and um, the colors are really great and you're gonna, you'll most likely be happy with what you paint. Okay, so we're gonna start on the other side. And now for this one, this side is more of our highlighted leaf. It's um, a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna start with my dark on the edge and then most of this big leaf is gonna be lighter except this little section that I have here that darkness is gonna to continue to that kind of little line that I have going on there. So I'm going to grab my colors. I'm mixing blue and green and black. Jenny says everybody's look so good. Thanks, Thanks Jenny. 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 Gloria says gnats look like the peaks almost. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Gloria. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start on the edge here with my darker color. And then I'm gonna follow this dark color to this, what I've already have outlined here. Now I don't love this color green that I put down. I'm gonna mix a little bit more golden in there so it's not such, um, I don't know looks too much like a Christmas color to me. I don't know why I feel that way, but I do. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow to that. And then I just take my clean water and I'm just gonna blend out this color down. Just using the clean water and the paint that I've already laid down. And then we're just gonna um, kind of do the same thing that we did with that last one is kind of make sure that our darks to mediums to lights blends good. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a dark edge just around the bottom of it. So I'm not outlining the entire thing, but I am kind of following that darker edge a little bit. So I'm only probably going halfway down the leaf, that darker edge. And um, sometimes I gotta get close to my paper to get a nice line. Okay. And then I'm gonna lift out a little bit of color to get a good highlight on that bottom. So in this area, I'm just gonna lift out, tap, dry it off, and lift that out. We need a water break slash battery change. Okay, oh. we're gonna go switch our water. Um, mine is especially muddy. And we'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> Don't walk on that board because that's where the. Okay, see, that's where that uh, main cam is on that board, so be careful walking on that. Just no, on the, over there. Also, I realized the last time I wore this sweater, I was at Subway, so I smell like BO. You do not it smell smells like, like the bread. It doesn't. I can't smell it. Yeah, I'll take a new paper. I thought I thought my husband was gonna bring my babies. Oh, are they here tonight? They're here. He went and picked them up. Oh, that's so oh, that's exciting. So I'm just gonna text him really quick and say, "Oh, you come in. Bring them over. We want to meet those babies." <laughs> they might be so tired though. Maybe that's why. No, it's only. I don't know. I don't know. We'll Either see. Way, yeah, they, they might be excited and happy for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be excited anyway. I'll be excited. For a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, water delivery. Whatever, reality. <laughs> <laughs> and then real life. Yes. Okay, are we good? Yes. I think we are. 
We good? Also, could I get um, a new paper? Yeah. Oh, it's right here. They they took care of you already. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, good. They're still coming. Okay. So, let's get back into it. Um, I just laid this color down. Now, um, for me, I'm just not getting as much interesting textures on this leaf as I am in other areas, but it's still pretty wet, so I'm just gonna leave that, and then I'm gonna come back to it and um, add some more stuff to it to make it a little bit more fun. Um, so I'm just gonna keep going up my leaf. Now, um, this part of the leaf, so these are two sections of the leaf, and this one is actually underneath this top one. So we wanna make sure that there's a, a shadow coming off from underneath this leaf here. So um, we're gonna get our dark green here. And if you need any more paint colors, let me know. But I'm still pretty good on my dark colors. Dark green, is that, are we doing like a mixture of colors, just kind of what we were using before? Just what we were using before, yeah. Okay. So like the mix of the black and the um, olive green. And I put a touch of, of blue, blue right? okay. and even a little bit of the yellow too. Okay. I just mixed them all in there. Sounds good. And I'm doing this shadow here on that leaf. Dolores in Amarillo, Texas is in a group of five doing this for girls night. Dolores is doing this for girls night. Hi, Dolores. Thank you. So Amarillo. In Texas. You guys will have Amarillo to. Is in the house. <laughs> Amarillo is killing it. Um, you guys have to post your work. I would love to see um, how all of these turned up. So please don't forget to post it at the end. You can even post it right here in the comments too. So I put in my shadow and now I'm just taking water and blending it out. Hey, Sarah, can I get a smidge of black? I yes. used way too much. Oh, I think with yours, I didn't even give you that money, actually, because I was like, we got to paint. Okay, so I'm just going to keep blending this out here around the holes. And I'm just going to go in and do another layer of dark for this shadow here. Now I'm going to start introducing some blue into here too, just some different um, color variation in here. So this is a really dark green blue. Almost like Viridian that we used with our gouache. Did quite a few people send pictures in of their... Of their uh, floral mm -hmm. wreath? Yeah, we got people sent it. And then, um, I don't know if you, if you guys are on our mailing list, whenever I send out emails of our project and when we're painting that night, I always include the submissions of what I get. I try and um, get those all together and so you guys can see what those look like. So you guys can sign up for our mailing list and um, you'll be able to see what everybody has painted. It's really fun. They're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful works. <laughs> okay. So I'm going back up through here and then I'm gonna do, um, this outer edge is darker and then it gets light and then it gets darker here. So it's the same thing. We want dark to light to dark. I'm gonna get a little bit more blue because I'm just really loving the blue green tonight. By same thing, same thing as the other side? Same thing, yep. Yeah. Okay. And I'm... Some more black. I'm not the only one just caking on the black over here. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong, because I still can't get it to look dark, so... Yeah. Like, really... Sometimes, like a lot of it is just letting it dry and going in and doing another layer on top of it. If it's too wet, like even when I'm, um, like when I'm painting like black dogs and stuff, I have to do
do layers. So I'll do a layer of dark of black and then I have to wait for it to dry and do another layer of black and then do another layer of black. Cause dark is actually really hard to get with watercolors cause they're meant to be transparent. But that's why I like these Dr. PH Martins because you can, because they're so pigmented, you can still get a really nice um, dark to them. Right here, did you add some yellow? I did. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, and you just kind of put it in like by itself or did you mix it? I kind of put it in mostly in by itself, yep. Okay. And then I blended it just a little. So I have a pop of yellow here. I basically just dropped in of the golden brown almost by itself and then blended it out with the colors around it because I just, I don't know, I just needed color variation over there. I just needed to switch it up. But maybe you would rather do that with the blue. That's cool too. What? Cherry moss is also an amarillo? Or amarillo. What? Amarillo loves you tonight. Yeah. Amarillo. They're all about yes. making art. Cherry, Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill. Okay. And then I'm just going to fill in some of these white spaces here because they're like bothering me that they're still white. <laughs> Maybe it's just from art school, but when there's like an area that's why I don't want paper too long. I like stress out and I'm like, I need to fill that as soon as possible. So I'm gonna go in while this is wet and lift a little bit of color off for my highlight. Just like that. We don't have a hole right here, right? It's just, we're blending that? No, that was, that's, um, that's supposed to be dark in there. Okay, good. Yeah, so it's almost like the vein of that leaf. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, 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 it does. And the same thing next to this hole here. Okay. But we can go back in and mess with that more after. So usually I like to fill it in. Like this side I'm filling in pretty quickly and then I'll go back and I'll, I'll start tweaking the changes of value and all of those things. So um, for this one, I'm just gonna fill this in with a wash here. Because on this top leaf on the left hand side, there's not like such a strong dark to light on this one. This one is kind of more of an even wash. If anything, it's darker in the middle. So I'm gonna put in my wash and then I'm just gonna drop in some color that's gonna kind of go through the middle, kind of to the top. And after I put that in, I'm just gonna start blending it out. It is crazy how with the bigger brush, it it's, fills in so It's much so fast, yeah. So when you're working in large areas like this, the bigger brush is like so nice to use. Thank you, for, thank you, Lee, for telling us about the steak. <laughs> 72 ounce, that's huge. It's the size of Casey. It would literally. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to check in with everybody, actually. Can we do that really quick? That'd be great. <laughs> Be like, great, yeah, perfect. Sure. Cause I want that to dry for a second. Let's start with Rachel over here. Okay, I think the color that you have here is so beautiful and I love that. I, th I think this shadow is nice, but what you want to do, and actually let me get a smaller brush so I can like make sharp little points. Okay. So your shadow goes, actually goes from here to like here. Mm -hmm. So you need to like stretch out this extend dark it. area, extend that dark area till about this here. Okay. And this is a hole right here. So try and leave that space white. Yeah, I realized that afterwards. And I was like, <laughs> That's oh, okay. No. <laughs> Sometimes I get confused between my like holes and highlights. So I have to just keep on looking. So extend this dark area out here and then through here. So this outline right here needs to be dark also. Okay. So try and just make that extend to those lines. Mm -hmm. And then I think the color you have right here is beautiful maybe let that dry for a little bit and do a little bit more layers but like that is also just really gorgeous so it's looking really nice 
Okay, so four. Oh yeah, sorry, I'll go on this. So Natalie's here, this is really nice. She has some good shadows going this way. What I would do is maybe do another layer down here. Okay. Here, shadowing. and then shadowing, darken it out. And then I would maybe introduce a little bit of blue, just a tiny bit over here, because it's looking a little too yellow. Um, I mean, unless you like, like, this is yours. So if you really like that color, then don't listen to what I'm telling you right now. Okay. But, um, <laughs> like, I'll add blue. okay, but if you want to add blue, just, just for color variation in this area, um, okay. you can do that. But I think this is looking nice. Darken that area up a little bit here, okay. kind of where we have that outlined. Mm -hmm. And then when we go back, do another uh, pass through here where it's darker. Okay. But it's looking good. Okay, so, oh, Casey, I keep on standing in your spot. Okay, uh, this is Missy. This color is really gorgeous here. You can tell that she got a really nice, like, dark navy green blue on this area, and that's so beautiful. Um, I would maybe try and extend your shadow out just a little bit more because okay. it kind of ends there, so maybe have it go to this point here and then do another run through because we want this edge to be nice and dark here. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. But the color that you have in here from this blue to yellow, that's really beautiful too. Cool. So good job. Thanks. Okay. And then I'm going to try and drop in a little bit more blue on the bottom left of my big leaf too, because I just don't love this green that I have going on here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a blue here. And I accidentally went more out of my outline, so I'm just, that's okay, I'm just making my leaf bigger. It's a happy tree now. It's now, <laughs> it's, a, it's a happy leaf tree, it's fine. But I'm just adding dark to that since I made that my new edge. And then I'm going to blend this out. Okay, let's give our leaves a break for a second and do the stem. So for our stems, it's going to be like that same idea as we did with the foot of the bird. So we're going to start off really dark at the top. So I'm going to mix my pretty much all of my colors here because I want a really nice dark color. Good. Okay. I'm going to mix all these and then right at the edge where the stem meets the leaf, I'm going to put in some dark color here, just like that. And then I clean my brush and rinse it. And then just use water to connect from the bottom to the top here. Do we start to, from the bottom and then go to the top? Or it opposite? doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. Just like that. And then I'm going to drop in a little bit more yellow here and blend it. And then I want a little drop at the very edge of my stem of dark. And then kind of mix that all together. So it's gonna be that, that kind of like same pattern that we're doing. We're doing dark, light, dark. I'm going to actually do one more layer of dark because you're, as we introduce water to it, depending on how much water you're adding, it might bleed out. So if you have to do another layer, that's fine. I'm going to do another layer. And then I might even, I'm going to pick up a little bit of color too. So that way I have a nice highlight on my stem. Just like that. Okay, and that's it for our stem. It, the stems are really um, kind of simple there. There you go. Yep. And you can see what Natalie is doing here and Misty is they're using their brush to, Casey, do you want to get 
close. Here, will you do that again, how you're moving that? She's using her brush as a way to push the pigment up. So because she wants this area light, she's just pushing that paint up into the area that she wants dark. That's very good. Because sometimes you just use your brush as a tool to move the paint in where you want it to go, especially when it's nice and wet. Okay, so while I did my stem, my painting dried a little bit more, which is good because that means I can add more dark layers on top of it. So I'm just going to go through and do another sweep of dark layers here. And blend those out. And then this area, I lost a little bit of shadow too, so I'm gonna go back in. Chris is on. Chris is on. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining us. So I'm just putting a little bit of darkness here, doing um, extra layers really defining it because here I go, I have a really dark dark and so you wanna make sure that the left side wherever your darks are, they match up to those darks there so it doesn't seem too off balance if that makes sense. And then I'm just gonna blend these out. And then actually on this leaf, I'm gonna drop in some water because I need texture going on here. I just, it's just too much of an empty space for there to be like a smooth transition. <laughs> so I'm just gonna drop in color and water to mix that up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this leaf here. But if you wanna drop in water, you have to make sure that what you're dropping onto is wet. So I just kind of rehydrated that area, and now I'm gonna do my water droplets on top. And then I'm gonna blend this out here that I've laid down. And to blend, you just take like a clean um, brush that's not too wet, and just kind of smear. And then that way you get rid of those hard lines or hard brush marks that you don't want to see. It is nice that we can layer and make it darker. So yeah. the first time, if it's too light. If it, yeah, that's the nice thing about watercolor. You can always go back in and just add color. Huh? <sighs> My girls are here. I haven't I'm seen them. Feet. Uh, my girls have been gone for the last two weeks um, visiting their grandmas, and I have not seen them, and I'm so excited to see them. My husband just picked them up from the airport. <gasps> Hi! Come here! Hi! Hello! Hello! Do you want to go say hi? Oh! Come over here! <laughs> Come on! I know, right? I would too. Yeah, we're painting. Isn't it cool? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is Luna. Luna, can you say hi? Hi. She's two and a half, and this is Ella. Say hi. Hi. And she loves to paint too, so she will be joining me on this sometime for sure. Yeah, you want to paint? Yeah. You want to paint too? Yeah, you can paint with us too. It's so cute. It's so good to see you. You like the colors? Yeah, that's nice. Just look with your eyes, okay? She's like, but I want to. Oh. I miss you. Are you wearing your pretty dress? Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I missed you. They're still on the show? Of course they are. <laughs> they should. 
Hi. <laughs> Ella, how was the flight? Good. Good? Oh, you want to walk around? That's fancy. <laughs> Where are you going, Lou? Just exploring. <laughs> so much. Hey. <laughs> okay. Because they eat here sometimes. What? What do you see? That's a star. Not yet. Not yet? You're so excited? Okay, girls, give me, give me a hug and kiss. And we can say goodbye. Let me do it over here. Okay, can you say bye to everybody? Bye. Okay, give me a kiss. Mwah. Love you. Come here, Els. I love you. We're almost done here, okay? I'll see you home soon. <laughs> Bye. Love you guys. Is that your mom or That's Michael's mom. That's my mother-in-law. Okay, Sarah, before you start, yeah. I got a question. Elizabeth said, why did you choose um, watercolor versus wash? For this project? Um, for this project, I chose watercolor instead of gouache because I like with the... I'm going to wait just a second until they go down. I don't know if they can hear um, as they go down. The um, because with watercolor, you get some really interesting textures, right? And um, here you can see that we have some water textures here. And we get that mainly with watercolor. And so I wanted to keep the, those variation and watermarks textures in there. But you can absolutely do this with gouache. Um, I've seen some really great, great gouache pieces done. So um, if you want to try it with gouache, go for it. But I just really liked the feeling of being able to get these watercolor drop textures in there. Is she still coming upstairs? Oh. <laughs> okay. So my leaf is looking. How do you decide you're done? Oh, yeah. It's feeling pretty done. It, yeah, sometimes you just like look at it and you're like, you know what? I'm just happy with yeah. how it is. Now, for me, I'm not totally happy with the greens that I have here. Uh, not yet. Let me do a couple more. I'm gonna go back and darken this once it dries, but I can't do anything right now. So this color that I have here, I just don't like this color. I don't. So I'm going to add some yellow to it to tone it down. Where's a monster leaf from? A plant. Monster leaf is from a plant. They can be. I, it's yeah, a tropical it's plant. plant. Yeah. I had them in my wedding flowers. Uh, it's it's weird fun fact. Monsters. <laughs> Do I have one of these plants? Yeah, you have a monstera leaf in your house. Yeah, yeah you got the monstera. Go, Jake. It seems appropriate that it's called that. It yeah, <laughs> it is massive. So these, yeah, these leaves are like huge. They're really big, and um, so they're super fun to kind of play with um, in your house and in painting. You know. So I don't know if this would ruin it, but uh -huh. you know how I kind of messed up with this gap mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Could mm -hmm. I go back and use the white? Yeah. Okay. That so make it look weird. No. Okay. So the bleed proof white, if you have it, that's a good tool to use if you need to go back in and make an area just white again. So you would just wait for your painting to dry. So Rachel wants to make this hole bigger. Mm -hmm. So you can just go back in with your bleed proof white and go over it. I use bleed proof white because sometimes you get like, like little paint marks on the side. Like when you accidentally like put your hand on it and then move it or something. Um, and I use the bleed proof white to paint over those marks. So then that way they're gone and you don't really see them. Um, now I feel pretty good, but what I'm noticing here on my dark area on that right side is that it's really dark and I want to kind of let the light back in on that. So I'm just going to lift a little bit of color out, um, in some of my shadows cause it's just looking a little too dark. Now you don't have to do this if you don't have this problem, so don't worry if, if you're feeling good about the dark side of yours. And then I'm just gonna kinda start blending where the veins go out. Are you 
adding dark or taking? So I'm taking dark away. I took dark away on this side a little bit. And then I'm kind of blending it together. And then when I took dark away, I lost my main vein line. So I'm gonna go back in and just add it again. Just kind of add that back in. If it's too wet, it might bleed just a little, but that's okay. And then I'm kind of spreading it out so it's not just such a harsh, dark line. This one is just like a lot of give and take, you know? You're just really messing with it over and over again. Okay, I'm just going to do one more highlight on this area. And then I think mine is going to be done. Okay. How are you guys feeling about yours? Feeling okay. It's starting to look like an alien head. An alien head? Oh, it looks so good. Yours looks so alien. good, so seriously. Mm -hmm. I love both Thank of you. yours. Okay. Thank you guys, should we hold them up? Sure. Because right? <laughs> it's natural. It's this just this whatever is. flows, <laughs> flows, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Everything in I nature doesn't look perfect. perfect. Yeah. No, the fun <laughs> thing is to look is. at your uh, paper towels when yes, they're so done. They're like yeah, Missy, you can hold up your paper towels and we can see. I went through two this time. <laughs> Quite the mess. They're super fun. It still looks way cleaner than mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hold up our paintings so we can see what we've done. So here's ours. They look good. I love the like dark blue Misty got on hers in her shadows. So beautiful. And Natalie has some really nice colors going on here with her yellower. Thank you. Rachel, let me see yours. Oh, yeah. And Rachel has both. So pretty. Very gorgeous. Good job, you guys. Thank you. <sighs> Yay. Yay. Good job. Okay. Success. We have some exciting information for you guys. Okay. So you guys want to see next week's project? Yes. Okay. So here's the thing. If you follow me on Instagram, I did a sneak peek. But the thing is, for that project, uh, you need arches, watercolor paper, and um, we're still getting some mail to us. So we put that one on hold just for a little bit, and we're gonna do a different one here. I love it. We're doing a monarch butterfly. So excited. And um, this project is so fun because the colors are gorgeous and vibrant. And, um, and then we wanna show you something that we've been working on that we think would help you a lot. Um, so we're gonna start doing just um, packs of projects. Um, so this is what it would look like here. So you would get a couple sheets of watercolor paper. Do you want me to put it? So you would get a couple sheets of watercolor paper here. You're gonna get a step-by-step -step handout. You're gonna get a reference photo, a five by seven reference photo. And then um, we'll send you the paints. So they'll be just miniature versions here. And uh, we'll label them so you'll know which one is which. And um, I know that these look small, but we tested them and so much paint fits into these bottles. So it's gonna be plenty for your projects. And so we're gonna have these available for next week's project and hopefully just as we do projects, just cause it's easier for you guys um, to get these together and um, you'll be able to have a reference photo and all of those things. So look for that on our website. We'll have that there. 15 bucks. They're 15 bucks. Um, no, and no brush your pan. You need your pan. Oh yeah, you do need your own palette, but you can use a piece of paper and, um, or I mean a plate, you can use a plate as a palette and brush. So, um, so it comes with these things here, the paint and the paper and the handout and the step-by-steps here. So that's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Hope you guys like it. I like it. Uh, it'll be on our website. Yeah, so if you want to order that, it'll be on our website when we announce the project tomorrow. So I think it's um, super good, too, for those that 
are like a little unsure but just want to try yeah if you guys want to try it and you're just not sure if you want to buy the full paints this is why where this is good for you because you'll get to test all of the little paints and you'll still be able to do the project and all that stuff so hopefully we'll see you guys next week and for all of you people painting please send us uh, what your work looks like we would love to see it you can post it on our instagram or on our facebook page and so uh, our instagram is let's go make art so you can tag us in it or if you want any feedback or critiques on it you can just email me at sarah at let's make art .com and i will they asked if it will ship in time for the live if this will ship in time for the live painting ready to ship tomorrow Tomorrow. We can, yeah, they're ready to ship tomorrow. So as soon as you order it, we can drop those in the mail for you. They want to know what the website is. The website is letsmakeart.com. That's our website. You can order these here. And uh, we have a bunch ready for you. So if you want to order them, then we'll ship them right away to you. So yeah, that's it. See you next week. Awesome. See you next week. Bye, Bye. you guys. Bye.